All right. So, Hare Krishna. Thank you all for joining. Um, so, for those, I mean, I'm sure you all know who I am. I'm Karuna Sindhu Avatar Das. Um, for those who are watching online who don't know, I am currently residing in Cape Town, uh, the Cape Town Temple. Been here since started visiting here 2018, but I've been here full time since 2019. Um, and uh, my Medanga journey really started when I moved here full time, more specifically in the lockdown 2020. Uh, so June, June 2020. So I've been playing the drum for about almost two years now. Yeah. So yeah, so I started really learning for the past two years and I started on YouTube because <laughs> um, in the lockdown, you couldn't really meet anyone, you know, and uh, I really didn't know much about who was the best Madanga player. I just wanted to learn how to play drums. So I played on YouTube, but I, I also feel like there, there was a need for someone to really show you how everything works because I could have avoided so many missteps, you know, speculating my own Madanga playing, you know, and, um, uh, you know, most people, most devotees, they believe that um, learning mantras is not really important as long as you feel the vibe and you just hit the drum, <laughs> you know, which I guess, I mean, if you're an empowered personality, that's okay. But for me, I was not that. So I needed uh, the mantras. So after speculating for half a year, I decided to start over uh, 2021 and just learn mantras from from the bare minimum, bare basic. And yeah, so since 2021, by Christmas Mercy, I've been playing with everything opening up. I also attended a three month course with uh, His Grace Bimal Chaitanya Prabhu, who is the one that produces the Mayapurus Medanga. Uh, you can check that also on YouTube. So he's the one that really made my Medanga journey even more deeper and more profound. And my appreciation of Madanga grew like that. So it's like how Srila Prabhupada says that majority of our spiritual um, advancement is made through association of like-minded devotees. So we've got even with anything, um, whether it's uh, medicine or engineering, even Kirtan, we always need somebody to show us, even our fellow peers. So that's what I would like this group to be about um, a group of peers helping each other and yeah obviously we'll try and expand this group from Madanga for those who would also want to learn harmonium we can also do that as the next step but uh, for now we're gonna have to just focus a uh, majority of us here can play cartels I know Chinmai has his own cartels um, uh, Vishaka, I don't know I've, I've seen her play on those baby cartels but yeah I think she can also <laughs> hey? Yeah, Vishaka, I was saying you can play cartels. <laughs> yeah. She's getting there. From, yeah. From <laughs> so I, I remember, she said, are those her cartels that have a little band? Yes. But she forgot them here. They're still here in the temple room. Oh, is it a small one? Is yeah. It a small one? Yeah. Okay. With the colorful band connecting them, yeah. So I'll keep them safe for you, for you when you return. Yeah, even Byron in the, in the comments says, those are great cartels. <laughs> Haribo. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. How much is it, is it possible to put on your camera? Yes, you're going to put it on shorty pen. Just getting, uh, pretty sure she's just walking her dog. Yes, as soon as we get into the house, we're almost there. We're put oh, no, no, no worries, no worries. All right. So, yeah. So, now I would like to ask the devotees present, to introduce themselves. And you know where I'm starting, Chinmai, because <laughs> you're the one that has a video on. So please uh, say your name um, and why you're in this course, and also say one word that describes you best. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hi, my name is uh, uh, Chinmai. Funny enough, the A at the end of my name is actually not pronounced, so it's just Chinmai. Um, I've been going to the temple. For a few years, uh, I was kind of always somewhat involved with Krishna consciousness, like back home in Botswana, there's a big temple nearby. I was never, never really like, genuinely interested in it. But like after I came here to Cape Town and 
uh, started questioning things a bit, then I yeah started to find it a bit more interesting. Um, and then kind of naturally with that comes just like attending Kirtan and then, you know, engaging with Kirtan as well. And then um, then I, got, I became quite curious about uh, learning the, the instruments. So firstly, yeah, I wanted to learn Kirtan starting with the, what seems like the simplest one. Um, but then the trouble was I couldn't get my hands on any Kirtan to practice with. Then luckily one uh, Prabhu Gokulesh at the temple, he... He, I asked him, he was going to, for a trip to India, so I asked him if he could get me a pair, and he said, yes, he'll, he'll bring one, and he brought, brought a really nice pair for me. So I've had that for about a year or two, so I've got a little bit of practice with that. Then, yeah, then the next target was um, Mridanga, which is even more of a challenge with kind of just getting access to it, right? Because like, at least at Kartal, even in comparison, you can get your own small pair, but like Mridanga is a lot more commitment. Um, but then even, yeah, I think as, as you had the experience at the beginning, it's like just hard to get someone to, who's willing to teach. Um, but yeah, thankfully you opened up that, that window. So yeah, looking forward to it. Um, yeah, what did that discuss? I don't know. Um, I guess you could say a learner. Horrible. Horrible. Nice. Hare Krishna. So... Young Mataji, could you describe yourself in one word? But before that, what is your name? Where are you from? And uh, what, uh, why are you in this course? My name is Vishaka and I live in Joburg. Um, and I'm here to learn the younger days. Haribo. And what is one word that you think would best describe you? If you could describe yourself in just one word, what would it be? I like that show. I think your I think your mom knows knows you best. So what 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 does mom say? I think it's fun. <laughs> Life's fun. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Howell. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <Hare Kishna. laughs> Joining from a distance today. Um, Thank you. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I'm, I'm from Johannesburg originally. Um, moved down to Cape Town 2004 to study. So I did my degree in music. Uh, that is my main focus. Um, so I do play some some drums already, but I find the uh, Bradanga to be quite a particular drum. It really requires uh, something completely different. So for that reason, I'm quite excited to to learn and to really um, get get a little more details um, from Karunji, and uh, yeah, just um, be a little more pleasant with. Um, yeah, I, I had a set of cartels that were given to me from, um, I actually bought them at the Durban Temple, and uh, they have a, they almost got a boomerang quality. Whenever they disappear, they always <laughs> seem to find their way back. So, um, and then later on, um, Briat Prabhu, he brought me back a Ridanga from, from India, and um, I really, I grew such an attachment to this drum, the sound, the feeling, it really had an authenticity uh, with the clay Ridanga. And uh, very sadly, my last temple stay, um, that same thing that happens when people sit down and it's placed on the, on the chair and uh, crashed on that. So <laughs> I've had this longing to reconnect with the Vridanga since then, since losing it. Uh, so yeah, I'm just um, really happy to be here. Uh, a word that describes me, I guess, um, it would be, have to be adap adaptable. Um, I find that um, in any situation I can, yeah, <laughs> I sort of bring on the chameleon and, and adapt. So hopefully I can bring some of that to, to playing some good, um, much better Redunga Beach than I, that I'm familiar with. So, yeah. Thank you, everyone. So as you can see, you guys are the perfect people to be in this course. Yes, you have to be a learner because, I mean, even in Bhava Gita, the main, the main topic is learning. You know, the whole Bhagavad Gita is Arjuna learning and we can kind of uh, relate to Arjuna and how he's learning from his spiritual master, Krishna, you know. And obviously, you know, Kirtan is such a fun thing. You have to have fun after all. It's not just about mantras and being sitting straight and 
looking all nice and you know but you have to have fun while doing it and while you're having fun you have to be adaptable because you don't know what the kirtan singer is going to do or say or what mood so you have to just on the fly just adapt so i guess you guys are the perfect people to be in this course Hare krishna and uh, all the others who are watching that could not join us today uh, so yeah so there's a total <clears throat> of nine of us in the course um and uh, I will share the link of this recording uh, to the WhatsApp group, but you guys can share it to everyone else as well. It's, not, it's a very, it's a, it's a course for everyone. It's a free course. Encourage people to um, join this course because I want us to have a nice family feel within the WhatsApp group. And uh, so today it's gonna be a bit different compared to other uh, days. So today's class, we're gonna focus a lot more on the theory and just preparing ourselves, our consciousness for what's to come in the next few weeks, months. There is no uh, end date for this. So it's more about your own personal journey. But obviously, I'll also put uh, in brackets, like maybe a few months, like we will focus on this on month one, we're focusing on this month two, we're focusing on this. And because ultimately, the goal is to have everyone be able to play comfortably in Kirtan. And the goal is not just to play in Kirtan, but to play and sing in Kirtan, because the Madanga is an extension of the player, you know. So Madanga, <clears throat> it's, it's the heartbeat of the Kirtan, you know. And I'm sure you've had an experience where, you know, Kirtans with cartels and just cartels are sweet, but as soon as the Madanga comes in, then there's a bit of a grooviness that can, uh, that can be in the, in the Kirtan. And it's it's a very it's a very nice instrument, but we also have to keep in mind we have to play for Krishna because the Madanga being the heartbeat of the kirtan, it, it's very easy for us to think that we are the heart of the kirtan as well, you know. <laughs> so so a lot of prayer goes into being a Madanga player um, because as you can see, so this is a Madura Madanga that I have right here. Normal medangas uh, are made out of clay because that the clay drum has it produces the best sound. So this Madura medanga is it mimics the real thing. So, but I see Vishaka has a drum. Uh, Byron Prabhu stays here with me, so he'll have this drum. Uh, Chinmay Prabhu, if you could come on and to the temple for classes, that would also be nice. Then we can also practice, even during the week. Uh, the drum is always yeah. open to anyone that wants to use it, especially during the week. So how this course is gonna go, um, Saturday and Sunday, we'll have class for one hour, like we're having right now, right? Saturday will be more focus on evaluations, seeing where everyone is with the mantras, um, what impediments are they facing? Obviously I am accessible during the week as well. But Saturday we'll focus more on everyone has to demonstrate uh, what what their practice has been like during the week, and then on Sunday is a day where we learn new mantras for the following week to come. And so, but obviously during Saturday and Sunday, you guys are more than welcome to ask questions. But today's class will be a bit different from all the other classes because today we'll just focus on introducing on what this instrument is and how it came about. So um, most of you are familiar with the tabla, right? You know. So the tabla, it um it's a similar similar to this. Obviously, the sound is a bit different with the drum with this madanga. But it the tabla is played in a seated position. So there's not much movement in terms of jumping up and down. But Mahaprabhu had the desire that the, 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 the drum players to dance in kirtan. So hence the madanga came about. And it was basically a tabla, but in one. And the strap is around your, your neck. And this helps that devotees should be able to sing and be able to dance and feel not restricted in the kirtan. Hence, I say that the drum is an extension of the madanga player. So based on who you are, you'll notice your own style of madanga playing will develop. But there will come a time where you kind of 
don't think about the mantras anymore because it's so automatic. Depending on what uh, the mood of the kirtan is, you already know that I must play a, a medium beat. Then if it goes a bit faster. And then you also have to have your highs, which, you know, will also get into deeper. So, yeah, so this comes with a lot of practice. Um, at least one hour a day of practice. Even myself, I still practice from time to time when I have an opportunity to. Um, but at least an hour a day is what I would be required uh, for this course. That's Saturday to Sunday, every day. So for those who don't have the Madanga and are in proximity of the temple, if you would come, uh, and when you do come, I'm also available to show you any any tweaks that you want to have when you're Madanga playing, like I, you have a problem with this and all that. And uh, yeah, Vishaka Mataji, you are in Joburg, but you can also call me anytime as well after school depending on how your school goes and just let me know what time um, you would want to have uh, sessions either in the afternoon or uh... yeah sure mm. so um all right so i'm gonna <clears throat> share my screen then we'll start sorry Prabhu. yes i please. just i think um i learned one uh, tune Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if this is like kind of like the right tune. Can I show you quickly? Okay, sure, Thadi. Well, are you gonna sing while playing it as well? Or what? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no. Worries. Who taught you that? Wait, so let's play it again. And then what? No, you know, the Madanga is a personality. The Madanga is alive. So sometimes we you'll notice you'll be playing and a, a beat just comes to your mind. It's not by chance, actually. Um, the Madanga, basically, it represents Balaram. And Balaram incarnates in this world as, you know, Anantashesh, who is holding the whole universe on the hoods of his head, basically, on his hoods, basically. And you'll notice or in, in temples, they always install um, Anantashesh, Anantashesh deity within the ground. And then they build the temple on top of that. So Anantashesh or Balaram, he carries the whole temple, the whole universe. So he's, he, he comes in this world to serve Krishna by maintaining everything and holding everything. So even the paraphernalia we use, uh, the arati, the arati um, uh, paraphernalia, the instruments, the temple itself, it's all an incarnation of Balaram because he's a paraphernalia that helps us to serve Krishna. So hence, uh, Krishna is all pervading, all per you know, he's in every atom, literally. So even the drum is alive. So sometimes you'll be playing and all of a sudden you feel like, hmm, let me explore this beat more often. And majority of the beats I know, actually I learned like that. You know, you get to know the basic mantras and after a while, you start just by hearing other kirtans. You will just gradually learn because you already know, okay, that produces this, the sound that's like da, and that's like ge. Yeah. Okay, if I can just do it two more times and put this there, then I can get to that same beat. And then, but then it's also still a bona fide way of learning. But obviously, because now you have the foundation, you you know. So as soon as you get your foundation properly, which is what we're trying to get here in this course, as soon as you get your foundation properly, then you will notice that you start to grow independently. Sometimes, you know. So that's so Lord Balaram is reciprocating with you. Very good. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> Hare Krishna. Uh, I hope I'm sharing that right. Ooh. Mm -hmm. 
Orang Aribo. For some reason, the MacBook does not want to share the screen. Okay. One second. Bring my password. Okay. So yeah, now we can see. Can everyone see my screen? All right. Yes. So, yeah. Let's close the side panel. All right. So, I guess we all know what a prana mantra is. Does anyone know what a prana mantra is? Would like to tell us? Prana mantra. We've heard of Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vidanta Swami Tinami Namaste Sarasvati Deva Gurvan Prashami Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pasta Tadestarmi Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nichananda Shri Advaita Gradar Shri Vas Ali Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. So actually Prabhupada's Prana Mantra and that's the Prana Mantra of the of the Panchatadva. You know. Chitaya Mahaprabhu and his associates. So anyone want to at least take a hit at it and say, tell me what a prana mantra is? Saka? Chirmai? Mantra? I'm not quite sure actually. So I'll give you a hint. It's I'll just say one word, blessings. So, what does that tell you? What a prana mantra? It's a mantra that gives you blessing. Yeah. So we, 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 because we're dealing with great personalities, you know, when we're on, when we're on, when we're giving a class, we represent, uh, you know, Shila Vyasa Dev because we're sitting on the Vyasa sun, and to invoke auspiciousness in the talk, and to also ask for guidance and blessings for the talk and also to show our respects to those great personalities who have taught us this knowledge we have a prana mantra this prana mantra basically it's a it's a mantra that has has it all basically you know like for example shila prapa's prana mantra is i offer my respectful obeisances unto his divine grace ac bhaktivedanta swami shila prapa whose very dear to lord krishna having taken shelter at his lotus feet so obviously it's 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 a it's a it's in the mood of awe and reverence, and but also in the mood of loving devotion to the personality. So we do these prana mantras to invoke auspiciousness and ask for their blessings and guidance. So when we're playing Sri Kaul or the Maranga, we we also are invoking Balaram's auspiciousness and also just just to give our respect and thanks for the Maranga. Because and then by doing that every time we play, even if it's in your heart, um, some respect for the drum uh, manifests. So and this is a mantra that you guys will be very acquainted with because you need to know this mantra off by heart. So, uh, Chinmay Prabhu, do you, would you would you like to uh, read it for us? Okay, sure. Um... So I see Namo Jagannath Sutayo and Namo Mirganga Nama Labanga Rasa Maduri Sahasra Guna Samyuktang Namo Mirganga Namo Nama 
Namo Baladevayo. Namo Namo. Nice. Mataji, would you like to read the translation? Yes. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the son of Sri Jagannath Marissa. Mishra, yeah. Shri, yeah. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I offer my obeisances unto the. Um, Maridanga. Maridanga, for which sweet uh, and integrin. Uh, Nectarian. Nectarian sounds in. I offer my obeisances again and again unto the Mar Majunga, yes. who has thousands of good qualities. And I offer my obeisances unto Lord Brahma, who Baladev, um, who assembles and um, assumes the form. Um, the form of the Majunga to the um, to serve Lord Chaitanya. Hi, Hi, very good. So obviously it's a very beautiful mantra. And it's as you can see, there's a common theme here. It's Lord Baladev and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, obviously, um, we know that he came to inaugurate this chanting of Hare Krishna in every town and village. And one key uh, tool that he used was the Mdanga. So obviously there's also uh, cartels as well. So it's been said also the cartels uh, are incarnation of Sudevi. So as you can see all these are various, uh, and Sudevi being a gopi. So all these instruments are great personalities that have come in this world to help uh, Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON and help Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to increase the chanting of Hare Krishna in every town and village. So I will be sharing these notes with you after the class. So you don't have to worry about jotting anything down. Um, but I would uh, suggest that everyone get a, a notebook. Even though I'll be sharing the mantras with you, but. It, I found it, it's very good to have your own personal notebook where you write the mantras down and also just write any key realizations you had or things that will help you uh, when you with your practice. Maybe don't hit it so hard because it hurts your hand or hit, or maybe someone says something to you and you're like, oh, wow, that's good advice. I'll remember that for when I'm playing. Because there's a lot of techniques, there's a lot of small, minute things that you can change to help you in, uh, increase your Madanga playing. So some important notes here. So another name of the Madanga is Kol. Kol, you know, this is what the traditional name is, Shri Kol. The sound of Kol creates auspiciousness exactly like the sound of a conch shell. So you'll notice that in the temples or at home, when we do artis, we blow the conch shell. And the conch shell, it basically brings auspiciousness into that environment, but also it keeps away um, some negative entities, it, it just clears the air. And you'll notice that it's a very um, profound sound. You know, even when I first heard it, I was like, wow, this is deep. <laughs> and same, same sound is produced when we hear the Madanga as well, as, as expressed because it's Baladev himself. The Madanga is a direct expansion of Krishna's flute from Goloka and also Lord Baladev. Therefore, it is considered and respected like Lord's, the Lord's paraphernalia. So like I've said again, before, that Baladev assumes the, the form also of Sri Krishna's paraphernalia. His main job is to help Krishna in whatever um, happens, is to help Krishna. So even when he came, he came first. It's understood that if you read Krishna book, that Lord Baladev, he came before Krishna. He was the seventh child, but um, because of, of the previous en uh, living uh, entities who were in that womb, he decided to first come and clear the energy. And, but when he was transported to another womb, 
he had done his job. So his main goal was to come first and make sure everything is nice for Krishna. Then Krishna, being the eighth incarnation uh, or the eighth birth, uh, he came after that. So you can see this common theme, you know, even Jananda Prabhu, how he helped Mahaprabhu, uh, Mahaprabhu in his preaching. He's always there to serve Mahaprabhu or serve Krishna. So it's a great personality. And uh, also when Krishna comes, you know, it's like a play. You know, everyone is like, okay, I'm going to come as this. I'm going to come as this. I want to be your 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 friend i want to be your uncle i want to be this it's it's a large scale play but then someone was feeling left out which was krishna's flute because we understand that everything in the spiritual world is personified you know even the flutes even the trees even everything you know the grass everything is personified it's personality so even the flute was feeling left out and ultimately krishna said okay you can come as the madanga you know so it's a great personality so, <clears throat> Madanga playing is considered type of yoga, and every day practice of 30 minutes is more or more is required. And obviously, more is better, especially with uh, in our early days, um, you know, with um, a great personality by his name of His Grace, uh, Madhava Prabhu. He said when he started playing the, the drum, he practiced this one mantra that we'll practice from tomorrow, Terakita. He practices it for two hours. No, six hours. Yeah, I said he practices it for six hours in Vrindavan in summer, in the hot sun. So you can imagine. And, you know, and he can you imagine he was already a good Madonna player, but he still went and did hot sarana or hand practice mantras for six hours a day. You know, that's, that's like um, the Madanga version of The Rock. Because also The Rock says he gyms for six hours. So. So you can imagine now you can see when he plays he's you know it's an amazing player you know any speed any type of kid hun he can play and that's also going to be our destiny as well whether you're young old male female does not matter all that matters is your heart and how much time you put in um, and also your surrender because our effort can only do so much but we also require the mercy of the balaram to help us the Madanga that produced, is, are there any questions so far? If you have any questions, you can always, uh, there's a but button at the bottom that's uh, reactions. You can raise your hand and then, yeah. So are there any questions at this point? All right. All right, so the Madanga that produces the best sound is 22, 23 inches in length uh, with four to eight inches with diameter on the small side and the big heads respectively. So you'll notice there's two different sides. The drum, right? This one small side creates a, a higher pitch sound. And then we have the bigger side that creates a more bass or deeper sound. So what they're meaning now here in this sentence. All right. So the mantras used in this book are from the Gran, Gran Hati music sampradaya originating from Narottam Das Thakur. So yes, um, some of you may ha have heard uh, some of Narottam uh, Das Thakur's uh, bhajans like Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Doya Goro Mohore Doma Bina Kero Yalu so um, that's one of many uh, bhajans that uh, Narutam Das Thakur has, has given us. But also all of these mantras that we're going to be learning, they're actually coming from him. So you can imagine what a great personality he is. So like we've already mentioned before, before playing, one must offer obeisances to the Madanga with, with the above mantra, the mantra above. So yes, so this mantra is... Uh, it's a very sweet mantra. It's a very nice mantra. Uh, please try and learn it off by heart. It's very simple to know this mantra. As long as you say it every day, after a couple of days, you start to realize, okay, I can say that part without having to look at it. So, or you can just give it a whole day and just try to memorize it, but it's, you know, if you want. 
but yes this mantra we have to know it off by heart uh, especially the translation so we know what we're, what we're chanting and you'll notice by meditating on this while you're playing your, your playing becomes sweeter um, becomes easier as well all right and all these points as well please also when I, i'll share this after uh, the lecture please also just try and uh, meditate on these because tomorrow's class we're going to go straight into mantras all right it is very important to say the mantra aloud when one practices right so one will not have one will not have difficulty in singing and playing at the same time afterwards so at, like for example we're going to be playing mantras so it's very important that you say these while playing as you hit you have to say the specific mantra because now when it's time to sing Hare Krishna because your hands and you know and your mind have already gotten used to you being vocal while praying playing the drum then you're not gonna be bottled up in a corner just playing the best beats you can play and forgetting that you have to actually chant Hare Krishna so the, the, the instruments, they're there to accommodate the chanting of Hare Krishna. That's why we are actually all here. The goal is not just to be a very good Madanga player, but it's to be a very good Madanga player within Kirtan. That's the main goal. Our main goal is to learn harmonium, cartels, Madanga, all to accommodate Kirtan. Because Kirtan is the main thing, right? The chanting of Hare Krishna. So the small head is called the Dayan. The big head is called the Bayan. So that's some nice information for you to know. So now this is some practical advice. Put strap over your right shoulder and under your left arm for right-handed players. Obviously, for example, I can, I can show it here. So When I first started playing, I thought I have to just hold the drum like this. And obviously it makes the most sense to me at that time. And, but then after a while, I realized my shoulders were really feeling, and my, my posture started to go back a bit like this because it's a bit too heavy on my neck. The drum is quite heavy. So like they're saying here, try and have it up over, like you have to just put your right shoulder in. So at an angle. Okay. Yes, sorry, other way around. <laughs> so it has to be on your right shoulder, right? So obviously, if you you will know when you pick up the drum if you're left-handed or right-handed. So by right-handed playing, meaning the right hand is on the dian or the smaller side. So and then it's kind of always going to be at an angle a bit. This helps to protect your back and your shoulders. And you'll notice when you do it like that, then you kind of have proper posture. You just always remember when you're playing the drum, you have to have good posture because it's very easy to succumb to the weight of the drum. The drum is a bit heavy. And especially if you're doing Harinam. <laughs> yeah, so trust me, it's not a nice feeling. I have had my back <laughs> broken for many occasions by holding the drum not properly. All right. All right. All right, so generally, big end goes with the weaker hand. It's small and goes with the stronger hand. So that's what I've mentioned before. All right, come to the top. So nowadays, there are different varieties of madanga. Clay drums with leather straps and leather head. That's the ones that we normally know like the one Vishaka has, that's the clay drum, should we call? Metal drums with leather straps and leather, leather head. Fiberglass drums with leather straps and leather heads. Balaram Madangas, fiberglass body and plastic heads. And by heads, it's basically the, the Dayan and the Bayans. So now we have even one that's not here, which is the one I have, which is a very new one to the market, which is the Madura Madanga. And obviously with um, the rise of Madanga players and the rise of Madangas being ordered, um, some people, some unscrupulous personalities 
would lie to the devotees and tell the devotees, no, this, this is leather from a Ahimsa cow. You know, the leather was not killed. The leather was, um, was, was taken naturally after the cow has passed away, which was the general practice that you can only use the leather from a cow that has naturally passed on. You know, so there was no killing of cows just for the leather to play to, for the Madanga. So, but now with the rise of uh, Madanga playing, uh, those devotees who are getting the leather from some people, those suppliers would lie to them and tell them, no, uh, this is Ahimsa. And yeah, the cows were died naturally and all that. So because to combat this now, plastic Madangas are coming about, like with plastic heads and fiberglass body, violon Madanga. But now even this is a plastic alloy as well. And um, it's, it's the closest one that comes in terms of sound to the clay drum, which is the best sounding drum. So it even says here, clay drums produce best sound. Don't put dangas with leather heads standing up when the surface is wood or ceramic, where it absorbs cold or moisture. This will ruin the, or tighten the madana head. So I'm sure, Vishnaka Mataji, you also notice sometimes your drum on a hot day is very high pitched and it sounds like a, like a tinny sound, like ping, 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 ping. And on a cold day, it's very like, you know, like, and then sometimes you might have to apply some heat to get it to stimulate and just, just, just stress the leather a bit so it sounds better. So this is also another reason why the Madura Madanga has been introduced because, because of its uh, plastic alloy, it stays the same pitch regardless of weather. You know, but obviously it will always still sound a bit plasticky, a bit tinny. So yeah, so there's a lot of Madanga here that we also learn here. It's not just, we're, we're not just gonna be learning about mantras. We're gonna learn Madanga care. We're gonna know um, how to make your own straps. I'll also share <clears throat> for those who even want to even um, make your own clothing for your Madanga. That's also another option if you want to sew. <laughs> Maybe Shaka might have to ask your parents to help you with that because it's, yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> A lot of things I'll be saying in this course like, um, that uh, might sound like, or oh, what is that? Uh, some of the vocabulary, but I'll just mention two of them for today. So at their eye, so at their eye, uh, repetitive finishing percussion or uh, triad, uh, like basically <clears throat> by triad, like three beats or three lines of, of, uh, of mantra composition played in a pleasant meter to coincide with the opening meter or sum is called the dehai, the finishing triad. So what I mean by that, I'll demonstrate it for you guys now. <clears throat> demonstrate it. So, so now, I'll do the one for the medium because it's the easiest one to learn. So this is like something also you will learn one day. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. That's the dehai. So it's the finishing move that also aligns for the next one. Because sometimes you'll notice like, especially with mantras like Jai and Adam uh, you kind of need it in some instances after Yashoda um, Nandana, uh, Prajajana Randana. So you're gonna need it to kind of balance everything out because the mantras, I don't think, they were made poetically, but sometimes it may require some adaptability like Mr. Howell was saying. And the adaptability is the stay high. So it helps, you can put it in any way. And it's just really, it's a reset. Like for example, most people like to play a uh, national pranam like this. Namaste So you'll see that at the beginning of the mantra, it's the beat the beat bear at the bass sound. And then there's another way where you can put it at the end. 
So at the end of the line, I put that. And some people want to put in the beginning. Namaste, namaste, so this is all about adaptability. And the day high, if you find that, okay, I want to maybe switch up the mantra, but that's where you apply the day high. And there are many different types of day highs. Even sometimes you even customize just. So that's just basically just tapping it. So yeah, so there's a lot of uh, adaptability mantra that you can apply. But don't worry, it may not make sense now, but uh, we will learn more about this starting from tomorrow, probably. All right. This is our last thing we'll be reading. Hatuti. What is a hatuti? It's a pleasant and careful step rhythmic composition played on a danga instrument with a, a comp, uh, accompaniment of cymbals or katas. So now, let me just finish it. Heralding the auspicious event of Lord Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and to focus the attention of the audience before commencing Kirtan performance. So, Hatutis, Dais, uh, Kavatal, all these, uh, these are different uh, types of how we can play Mudanga based on different beats. Sometimes you'll notice the cartels will play one, two, one, two, and sometimes the cartels will play one, two, three, one, two, three. So this shows you that um, there's a relationship between cartels and the Mudanga. But now the question is, now I wanna ask the students, who, if just by, just by uh, taking, a, taking, just using your intelligence, there's the Madanga singer, there's the, the Madanga player, there's the lead singer, and then there's the cartel player. You know, maybe let's say for this example, the lead singer is using harmonium. Who should listen to who? Is, is the Madanga player listening to the cartels or the cartels listening to the Madanga player? I open the floor. Oh, can you hear me now, Saka? Yeah, just sometimes you put breaking up, but oh, oh, oh. I, I can hear you. Yeah, Zoom, eh? Yeah, zoom. <laughs> what to do? Sorry. So do you want to take a chance at it? Who do you think listens to who? Should the Madanga player listen to the Kata player or should the Kata player listen to the Madanga player? Cartel player listen to the Madanga player. Um, and, and what happens if the Madanga player uh, is not good at timing? Mm, yeah, true. But also, what Maybe. if the cartel player is not good at timing as well? It's another one, eh? <laughs> Chinmay, you want to take a stab at it? Pardon me? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure, to be honest. Um, so you said that the harmonium is leading, right? Yeah, let's say I'm singing harmonium and, you know, you and Vishaka are playing madanga. And uh, so it's two madangas and Byron is playing cartels. So he's the one that's, that's playing cartels. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm singing very slowly. So who should be listening to who? Are you guys listening to Byron or is Byron listening to you guys? I, th I thought we would judge it based on the harmonium, not, not the cartels, like the leader, the one who's leading. Wouldn't we judge based on them? That is the answer I was looking for. It's, okay. <laughs> it's not about what the Mridanga player wants. It's not about what the cartel player wants. The cartel player, the violin player, whatever instrument, you know, whatever instrument you're using, First starts with listening to the lead singer. So if the lead singer is singing in a certain way, and if they're advanced enough, they can actually show you the meter. Then what follows is the cartels. Right now, 
it's weird because the cartels also have to listen to the Madanga. So you can understand that it's, it's a whole team effort because the cartels is like the metronome, you know, the tap, 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 which also we can use to also practice our, our Madanga play. But after some time, you kind of get used to how it should sound based on, you know, so sometimes you want it, let's say it's Harinam and you're just doing Harinam alone and you, the drum, you can keep the meter because you've been doing it for so long. But in the beginning, it's very important as a Madanga player in your first public Madanga, because it's going to happen. You guys are going to come to a point where you are the Madanga player for that Kirtan and it's Sunday Love Feast and you don't know what to do, but you just have to focus on the cartel player. That will save you because but at the same time, you have to also adapt now. You have to listen to the singer because sometimes the cartel player can be off as well. You have to now listen to the singer and the cartels. And that's what will determine what, how, how fast you play. You have to always be listening. Always have to adapt. Because it's just the smallest things. It's the smallest thing that really determine the speed of it. It's not just the volume of the Madonna, of the singer, you know. So that's something also that we'll also try and learn here as well. So now with the how what's gonna happen from tomorrow, we're gonna learn Hat Sarana. Hat Sarana stands for hand practice. So our wrist is where all the power comes, you know. It's not really about the shoulders. You notice as I'm playing, my shoulders are not moving. It's all about my wrists. Even with cartels, it's all about your wrists. And I'm sure you guys have an experience about that. The more you put your shoulders into the equation, the more pain actually you feel. You, you can't do fast beat with shoulders the whole time because of shoulder exercise. But your wrists, you have to strengthen your wrists. You have to loosen your wrists. And that's what hand practices is for. So we'll play amongst the legs. This is to help you faster play them. So that's why it's very like it's you have to practice every day. Get your wrist very loose but also very strong at the same time. So that regardless of whatever speed or whatever mantra has been played, you can adapt to it and play it immediately. Because it, Madonna playing has to be very um, seamless. You sh we should not have, hear any breaks. We should not hear any, any stoppages that are awkward or anything because it destroys the whole mood. Because remember, the Madonna is the heartbeat of the kirtan. And when the heart stops in a body, the whole body goes in, you know, in, in shock, basically. So we have to be very careful uh, of when we play the Madanga. So um, are there any questions so far about uh, what we spoke today and what's gonna happen for tomorrow? Okay. So this concludes our class. Yes, it's 11 o'clock. So tomorrow, please log in at 10 o'clock and Hare Krishna Prabhu, please uh, come in at 10 o'clock. Um, you will see this uh, recording, depending on how fast the internet is. Uh, I'll upload it on YouTube and share it immediately with everyone. I'll also share the notes that we used today. It will be a, a short book that we'll, I'll be sharing to you guys. And uh, we're just trying to make some minor edits. Uh, me and someone else is helping me. I'm gonna make some minor edits to this book and then as those edits are complete, then we'll share the book to you. Should be today or tomorrow. But we'll share the notes for today as well. Today. So um, yes. So tomorrow come in at 10 o'clock. And uh, if you can have a note a pad, a pen, so that you can obviously just write certain notes that I'll be saying. And uh, also, uh, yes, that's what I was gonna say. So all these mantras that you're gonna be learning. I will record them, right? So I will record them. And whatever mantra we learn, I'll record it so that you can have a reference to use while you are learning. I'll also record it in a way that, you know, for five minutes, you can have somebody to play with or follow along. Then you can always reset that video and play along. So for example, if it's Dere Keta, 
I'll do it with you for that five minutes. Or how many minutes I, I decide to make it. Okay, and I'll go at different speeds. Okay, while you play, you can have someone to play with. But also, I'm also always available to you know, help you. Because it's on YouTube, you guys will be able to determine this to, to increase the speed if you feel fine. Okay, now I can improve my speed. Okay, let me go fast and go fast and go fast and go faster. Yes. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much, everyone, for coming on the first day. Yeah. Hare right, Krishna. Any closing words? Hare Krishna. Oh, thanks a lot for putting this together and yeah, we being keeping it so like organized also with your book and everything. Yeah, yeah you've really gone over and above. Hey, Krishna. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Howell. Hey. <laughs> Still here. Haribo. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you, Prabhu. Even, you know, probably is even getting his car fixed at the moment, but he's still logged in. <laughs> All glory to him, you know. Chai, chai. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Vishaka Mataji and also to your mother. Thank you for logging in. No problem. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Ah.